Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video, we're going to be solving a problem with A plus BI because it's the name of this channel, right? So we have to keep using it. So we have an interesting equation, which is 17th degree. And I might have done this problem before. If I did, if I did, I apologize, but hopefully this is not going to be a repeat. Anyways, we have a 17th degree equation. Is that called unseptic? Something like that. And we have a plus bi to the 17th power equals a minus bi, which is the conjugate of a minus, I mean, a plus bi. So these two are conjugates, but one of them is raised to the 17th power. Isn't that interesting? That's such a nice number, right? Now, when you see an equation like this, first reaction, you're probably scared. If you are not familiar with complex numbers, that's how I felt too. I think there was a version of this problem which used something like a 2000, maybe 14, because obviously that problem appeared on a math competition, right? Depending on the year, uh, this would be a good problem. But this didn't happen in year 18. That was a long time ago. Anyways, so now here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and use the binomial theorem. Just kidding. We're not. Because there's going to be 18 terms on the left-hand side. Imagine what's going to happen. Plug it into Wolfram Alpha and you're going to see. That's just going to be crazy, right? It's going to spin out of control real quick. Instead, we're going to use some useful knowledge. First of which is we can absolute value both sides, can't we? If we absolute value both sides, obviously, if two complex numbers are equal, their absolute values are also equal, right? I mean, that should be an absolute truth, absolutely true, right? So this implies something good, because if you have a power inside the absolute value, you can put it outside, which is, again, a super duper nice property. And how do you prove that? Uh, you can do it. It's not too hard. Uh, and probably with a polar form, it's easier. On the right hand side, we have the absolute value of a minus bi, or you can call that the modulus, right? Now notice that if two complex numbers are conjugates, then their absolute values are equal. I mean, it's the same thing because this is square root of a squared plus b squared. And it's the same thing, right? Because you square them anyways. And absolute value is always a real number. But we have to raise this to the 17th power. And this one is just going to stay like that. Cool. So we can do a couple different things. Uh, we can call this R. R is basically short for absolute value. And then we get something like R to the 17 equals R. You could also divide by R, you know. But here's one thing you need to be careful about. Don't divide by R. You're going to lose something. Instead, subtract r subtraction is, or addition is safe division is dangerous when it comes to solving equations so be careful and then factor out r so that you'll have all the possible solutions here we get the following scenarios r equals zero is one of them the second one is r to the 16th equals one by setting this equal to zero and that implies r equals one or r equals negative one two results right great now we got three solutions, so we're going to look at each one, right? Each case. First of all, I want to look at the third one because R is always greater or equal to zero. Remember, it's a real number and it can't be negative. So R is either zero or one. Nice. And what does that mean? If R is equal to zero, and remember R was A squared plus B squared, the square root of that. This implies that a squared plus b squared is zero since a and b are real because remember when you write a complex number in a plus bi form, a and b must be real. If these are complex, then this is not your complex number. It, it could still be a complex number like z plus wi when z and w are complex, but it's not going to be like in standard form or it won't be in the simplest form. Make sense? Hopefully. And this implies since a and b are real, a equals zero and a big end b equals zero. And that means a plus bi is just zero. So the number you're looking for is zero. And if you use zero, it'll work. But it's not very interesting, is it? Let's use r equals one. That's more interesting. This implies that a squared plus b squared is equal to one. And now notice that a plus bi can be written as r e to the i theta in polar form. And theta is going to be the argument of a plus bi. 
and r is going to be the modulus the absolute value but remember that was the square root of a squared plus b squared and a squared plus b squared is equal to one therefore r is one so i can just write this as e to the i theta which is obviously much nicer right great so a plus b i let me write this one more time just to emphasize how nice it is a plus b i is e to the i theta don't you love that now here comes the interesting part we have an equation don't we so let's plug it in a plus b i to the 17th power is a minus b i but what is a minus b i if a plus b i is e to the i theta easy you just flip both sides and then it's going to be e to the negative i theta the reciprocal and then you're going to multiply the top and the bottom by a minus b i which is the conjugate but notice that this is going to give you a squared plus b squared which is one so don't worry about it it's going to give you a minus b i in other words to keep a long story short from here a minus b i sorry uh, not from there but you get the idea from here if a plus b i is e to the i theta, then a minus b i is just going to be e to the power negative i theta. So in other words, the conjugate is the reciprocal in this case, because the modulus is 1. Awesome, I got these two things. I'm ready to rock and roll. Are you ready? Let's go ahead and use this in that equation. I have e to the i theta, and then raised to the 17th power equals e to the negative i theta. And then from here, by simply raising this 17 i theta and negative i theta i put everything on the same side 18 i theta equals zero 18 is not zero i is not zero theta must be zero case closed that's it no nope. that's not the end of the story this is actually where the story starts theta equals zero is fine that works but that's not the only solution why because we have something amazing with complex numbers that when you get an equation like this, I don't know why I wrote I7, by the way. So when we have something like e to the power 17 I theta equals e to the negative I theta, we don't have to stop here. We can just insert 1 into the equation, which can be written as e to the power 2 pi and i. So in the complex world, 1 can be written in infinitely many ways. They're all 1, but it can be written using different n values by the way n is an integer so there are multiple branches right and we can go ahead and do the following add the exponents that's what the rule says right follow the rules there was a poster in one of the math teachers classroom and i visited it i visited it many years ago and it said shut up and do the math i know it's kind of like rude or whatever but that's sometimes what it is you know you just have to follow the rules so we're going to put 18 i theta here and 2 pi n i. i is cancelable. And then 2 goes into 18 nine times. And we get theta equals pi n over 9. n is an integer again, right? n can take which values? Think about it. n can be 0, 1, 2. Now when n becomes, when n becomes 18, 18 you get 2 pi right which is the same as 0 so you could probably use all the way up to 17 and including 17 that gives you 18 values so there are 18 solutions are there well start with n equals 0 you get theta equals 0 and this means a plus b i remember it was r e to the i theta but r was 1 so it was e to the i theta that will be e to the 0 which is 1 so one of the solutions is 1 for n equals 0. If n is equal to 1, then theta would be pi over 9. And a plus b i, which is our complex number as well as the name of this channel, is going to be e to the power i times pi over 9, which can be written as cosine pi over 9 plus i sine pi over 9. By the way, that's 20 degrees. This means a is equal to this and b is equal to that. But wait a minute, can we find the exact value of cosine 20 degrees? I don't think so. But if you do, please let us know in the comment section down below. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.